Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would evaluate audit finding using what we learned earlier materiality. So let's not lose track of what we are doing. So far, we looked at materiality for the whole financial statement. So let's assume this was half a million, set up at half a million, and we learned how to set this. What are some options? How to set this account up? Then we determine performance materiality. We call this performance materiality also tolerable misstatement what we did is we took the half a million and we allocate this materiality to various accounts such as cash receivable notes payable so on and so forth so this is what we did up to this point in this session we're going to evaluate the results and by evaluating the results we're going to estimate the total misstatement in each segment so this is the segment here for example cash is a segment account receivable is a segment then estimate the combined misstatement and we're going to see why do we combine misstatement in a moment then compare the results to the preliminary or the revised judgment about materiality then make a decision based on what we did so what we do is this after we set up materiality we're going to go ahead and complete the audit procedures so we're going to have an audit program we have to follow eventually we're going to learn how to do this so just before we proceed this is just this those three steps that we do today we're going to work with later on in the course this is just the taste of how we do things okay so basically we go ahead and collect the audit and we're going to keep track of our of our mistakes so auditor document all misstatement means we just keep track keep a tally of all the misstatement found in each audit segment and cash and receivable and inventory uh, and notes payable and accounts payable so on and so forth and we're going to have two types of misstatements we're going to have something called known misstatement and we're going to have something called likely misstatements so what are known misstatements known misstatements are those that the auditor can determine the amount of the statement in the account. So what we did, this is based on evidence. So we collected the evidence based on the audit program and we find those are kind of factual error, actual error we found. Basically, we looked at the transaction, the actual transaction. We can pinpoint the time, the date, who performed the transaction and who made the error. So basically, those are um, identifiable transaction. For example, one example could be, for example, if we had a lease, okay um, the lease should have been capitalized but it was expense or it was expense it was capitalized so we find out the error known misstatement that's easy then we're going to have another type of misstatements that are called likely misstatements and likely misstatements we're going to break them down into two types one type is the differences i'm not going to call it disagreement it's the differences between managements and the auditor's judgment about estimates of account balances certain balances on the balance sheet such as uh, warranty liability, among many others, they are subject to estimates. So what happened? The management made an estimate, and now we could question this estimate. We may, we may disagree with management. Maybe the management estimated too much warranty or too little. So, for example, also allowance for bad debt that relate to account receivable. Well, maybe the management allocated... Uh, overestimated or underestimated that account allowances so that's another likely misstatement we don't know if it's for sure misstatement it's likely misstatement and the second type of likely misstatement which we're going to work with a little bit more today is the projection of misstatement based on the audit auditor's test of a sample so most accounts what we do not all of them but most account we sample and what is sampling sampling basically you're taking a basket that have you know hundred of items and you are only selecting from that 100 of items you are selecting maybe 20 maybe you're selecting you know those 20 items and based on this 20 items you are making a statement on the total population this is what sampling is okay and we're gonna look at a little bit more specific example with numbers so your sample the one that you selected may not be representative of the whole sample now we're gonna later on talk about sampling much much more in details again this is we're jumping you know ahead but we need to illustrate how it works but this is what sampling is so we could we could also have misstatement due to sampling okay so let's take a look at this example to see how the process works. Okay, this is the best way to work with this. So this is a simple example. We have three accounts, cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. And this is the performance materiality or the, what else do we call performance materiality? We call this tol tolerable misstatement. 
4,000 for cash, 20,000 for receivable, inventory 30,000. The preliminary judgment about materiality for the whole thing is 50,000. For this company is 50,000. Now what we did, we went out there and we started to collect the evidence based on our audit program. And those are the known and direct projection. Those, those misstatements are based on evidence that we selected. We find out there was $2,000 error in cash. $2,000 error in cash. Well, then we have to also add to the what we find out the likely, the likely, the likely misstatement. <clears throat> We're going to have to also add the likely misstatement of the error. And, and for cash, we don't have any likely misstatement. And the reason is simple because if you notice here, it says we audited 100% of cash. So that's why this number equal to zero. And the likely misstatement that we are considering in this example is allowance for sampling risk. So we are saying we might have made some mistakes. We might have some mistakes uh, because the sample was not representative but for cash there is no sample to worry about we audited 100 percent therefore there is no sampling in other words our total misstatement is two thousand dollar for cash which is below four thousand we can state that this account is fairly stated this account is fairly stated okay now why why would they have a two thousand dollar error we're going to see later on when we audit cash they could have wrote a check they did not record it or it was outstanding it doesn't matter just know it's a misstatement for now that's all what we're going to work with Let's jump to rece do receivable. Let's walk real quick. The, the to tolerable misstatement for receivable is 20,000. The observed misstatement that we find out is 12. Those are the actual, actual misstatement. Then we projected, we, we said there is a, there's an additional $6,000 error due to the sampling because we sampled account receivable. So what we did, we said, there's maybe an addition, maybe this is maybe the six thousand dollar is maybe and basically if you look at it it's fifty percent of the twelve thousand we added fifty percent and we said maybe there's an error therefore the total misstatement for account receivable is eighteen thousand which is still below the twenty thousand now let's look at inventory inventory the tolerable misstatement is a little bit higher thirty six thousand the misstatement that we found directly by collecting evidence is thirty one thousand five hundred then we added 15,750, 15,750, um, 15,750 uh, as al uh, allowance for sampling risk. And if you notice what we're doing is whatever error, whatever actual error we found, notice what's happening with this auditor, whatever they found, notice they found the 12,000 in account receivable. What they said, what they said is this, whatever we find, we're going to take whatever we find and multiply it by 50%, and that's going to be our allowance for sampling risk. In other words, we made, uh, we might have have selected the wrong sample because of sampling error. So notice, if we take 31,500 times 0.5 will give us 15,750, 15,750, okay? Now, um, so this is, so notice, inventory is overstated. Inventory is overstated. Why it's overstated? It's overstated because um, it's overstated or misstated to be more specific. Because the total misstatement that we, that we find out is 47,250, 47,250. And we could only tolerate, we could only tolerate the, toler the tolerable misstatement. We can only tolerate 36,000. And the tolerable was 47,200. Okay. Now, what I want, what I, uh, because this is how, this is what they chose to do. They chose to um, use 50% of whatever we find. And this is, the, this is the results. Okay. Now, bear in mind. So let's see how we came up with this figure, 31,500, 31,500. Let's assume the inventory, the total inventory equal to 450,000. And here's what we did, we sampled. So we went to the inventory account and we sampled certain inventory items. And this, the total sample was 50,000. So of the 450,000 in inventory, so just let's take a look at this. And this is all of inventory. Each item is an inventory. Okay, what we did is we selected only, let me change colors here, only we selected this 
um, only we selected this item this item this item it doesn't matter those items we selected those items and those items are equal to um, uh, 50,000 so those items are equal to 50,000 this is the sample that we selected and in this sample of inventory we found out we had errors of 3,500 3,500 so if we take 3,500 divided by 50,000 this proportion here equal to 7% okay what we say well we say is so in, if this sample there's 70% in the sample sample of the statement we're going to take the seven percent multiplied by the whole population equal to thirty one thousand five hundred okay so this is where we come, where we come up with thirty thousand five hundred thirty thousand thirty one thousand five hundred because we sampled and because we sampled we say there might be a risk in sampling because you know we selected those and we did not select this one we did not select this one we did not select all the others right and by not selecting all the others we could have we could have mistakes in all the others, and we think the mistake is 50% of what we projected. So that's why we take 31,500 plus 50% the same for the sampling risk, and this is how we came up with 47,250. Okay. Now, a few things I want you to notice: the actual misstatement, the actual misstatement that that is, that, for, as I told you, inventory is not fairly stated. Therefore, the financial statements are not fairly stated. But what I want you to notice is. What we, what we actually find out is good. It's below 50,000, but the total misstatement is above 50,000. That What needs to be done is this. We need to go back and look at the inventory account. This is what's going to happen. We'll see that later on. We need to examine the inventory account. This account will need to collect more evidence about inventory because we might have made a mistake. Okay, Maybe all the ones that we selected, notice the one that I that I circled in orange, they were mostly bad. Just we happened to select them bad, and that's why the error is seven seven percent. Maybe if we if we if we do another selection or if we expanded our sample, maybe this will go down to three or four percent. Okay. So what we need to do, we need to go back and do and do more work. Okay. The other thing I want you to be aware of, what happened too, if the auditor is moving in order, for example, when they looked at cash and cash, uh, we only found 2,000 in cash and uh, 18,000 in account receivable, we might have, we might have, we could, the auditor could go back and revise this tolerable misstatement up to 40,000. In other words, take the misstatement that we did not find here and put it into inventory, assuming the, the, the auditor is working in order. So they're, they're looking at the balance sheet first, so on and so forth. That's the assumption here. So the auditor can revise the inventory. They could say the inventory is 40,000. The, the, to, the tolerable misstatement is 40,000. Or they could increase it depending on what the numbers are. I'm just telling you that it can be, it can change. But if we need to do some work, the work has to be done in inventory. Inventory is misstated. So this is how we evaluate the evidence. Now, bear in mind, bear in mind, this is only a taste of what's coming up. A taste of how we evaluate evidence because we need to look at sampling. And there's many types on how we do sampling, many ways on how we do sampling. Okay, um, there's more than one way. There's there's many ways to look at sampling errors, and we need to take a look at how do we adjust our audit, how do we adjust our materiality based on the results. So hopefully, in this session, you learn how to um, how to evaluate audit finding. The next topic we're going to be starting to look at is something called audit risk. So we're going to look into the audit risk in the next few sessions. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. Good luck.